I am currently at home prepping for a slideshow that I've got tonight in Manchester. Got the home home crowds watching, which obviously I love. Obviously I'm not from Manchester, but um, I'm from Crewe, it's North West. <coughs> but yeah, I'm currently prepping the slideshow. Yeah, so it's all based on watercraft, which is location, observation and approach. So first thing is like, what I mean by that, sorry, is how to locate the fish, what to observe when you're watching them, and then how to approach it once you have located and observed them. Like what drives you, what powers you. This is a fish here uh, called the baby black. It's one that I'm currently on the tail of, hopefully. I've had a go for it the last couple of springs. I haven't put any full, full time in for it yet. Um, but yeah, this is old Aussie. Aussie, with it, it's in his book. Uh, what is it, Forces of Nature? Yeah, real mega, mega fish. And this is the one that's driving me at the minute. And what I mean by find your drive is like, some people go fishing and they don't actually know what their, their, their drive is, you know, what gives them that hunger, that power. And you need to know that power, you know, some people don't don't know it, you know, or, or don't think about it, you know, but what is it? Is it a lot of bites? Is it a big fish? Is it a, a little scaly ones? So yeah, what what is it? What drives you? You need to know that because you need to be going down and fishing it 110%. Like this fish here, I drive 170 miles to this fish, space the red in this fish. Uh, it's 170 miles for me. Uh, probably about 50, 60 acres the lake. Got about probably around 30 fish, I'd say. Um, there's a few stockies in there as well, but actually fish that you want to catch is probably six or seven. You know, there's a out of bounds. There's a lot of real long range stuff that I can't even reach. There's loads of birds on there. It's a real, real challenge. That is what powers me. You know, you've got to have that in your fishing. Otherwise, you're just not gonna do all these things that I'm that I'm that you're gonna see in this slideshow. You wouldn't do any of them without without knowing your power. You know, what's there to power you to go through all the the heartache and pain and blood, sweat and literally tears. This is what powers it. This right there. You know, that fish. You know, and it obviously it changes from goal to goal. Currently red inbound. Time is four past two, two fourteen to be precise. And I hate the M6. Simple as that. I am probably due to land there about. It's going to be what five o'clock. You know, it's 170 miles for me, Reading, uh, where I'm going, there and thereabouts. So yeah, I'm looking. Hopefully, fingers crossed don't hit any traffic yeah i've got to get there it's going to be dark it's going dark what four o'clock quarter past four these days but yeah it's going to be dark i'm going to have a mooch around in the dark it's, it's easy to just go down and set up but i've got to put myself in the right position i can't even if i don't hear anything I've still cured my mind that i'm not sat in a swim if i were to just go down and set up be thinking in my mind like oh they could be showing down there or they could be showing down there you know just that one show could change a session like that especially in the winter it can change change of winter that one show can give away their whereabouts you know they'll be definitely grouping up now so if you can find one fish you can definitely have a good chance of finding them all especially in this way it's probably what 30 fish in 60 acres it, 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 it's not easy you know so to find one fish would definitely definitely be a grace, a grace, be a blessing, I don't know, it'd be good anyway, <laughs> I'd definitely like to find one, that would be mega, mega's a bad word. <laughs> we are in the swim, a couple of rods are out, doing it, Ooh, sexual, yeah, in night mode here, it's about half past eight now I think, Two rods just gone out, hinges, bright ones, well no, one on a white, one on a bog standard colour, the older manilas, yeah, yeah, one on a white manila, one on a standard manila, yeah, just about to put the old bait out, just made it up, 
reckon it is. Maggots. Yeah, so I've got maggots, I've got crushed, um, crushed manillas, 16 mils, put them through the blender. Uh, there's manila pellet in there, uh, manila powder, just a bit of everything really, but only small pieces. Stuff, something that's uh, easily digestible for the fish. Don't want to be putting too much whole baits out and all things like that this time of year. Morning. <laughs> Very quiet night. It's up at three. It's out from the tree. 15, 20 minutes. Had a cup of tea, but absolutely nothing. Didn't hear a sausage. Didn't even hear a bird spook and nothing. That is very quiet. I'm hoping to see something this morning. And if not, I'll be mooching all day. Climbing some trees. <sighs> Yawning. Hell. Been watching the water all morning and I haven't seen a thing. Which obviously isn't great. It's now about say nearly nine o'clock. And I literally hawk eye the water. Do not take my eyes off it. Uh, well, as little as I can. If I need to talk to someone, I'll do a phone call on the old speaker, try not to text and things like that. I just think these, especially first light, you know, well, to be fair, this time of year they could show any time and it might just be one show. And if you miss that one show, it's the difference between a, a potential move on the cards and a capture winter game changer you know you just cannot be focusing on on anything else other than watching the water you know it speaks for itself really so many people especially this time of year as well i'll just be in the bivvy watching i don't know youtube or something like all the answers i again this is personal preference all the answers are out there you know if someone's going to show it's going to give its whereabouts away especially on a lake like this like say 50 acres, 60 acres with low stock. This is big pit carping, you know. I know that sounds a bit, <laughs> a bit weird, but yeah, this is big pit carping, and there's nothing gonna give the fish's whereabouts away better than the fish themselves. Better than just guessing yourself, you know. Always keep an active mind by looking. And one thing I do do as well is always looking at that far margin every time when I'm looking out there and I'm scanning. Obviously, if you see something or you're focusing your eyes on something that's getting your attention, then you're going to do that. But other than that, when I'm just looking, I'm always focusing on that far margin. That far margin for me is probably, what, 800, 1,000 yards away. But I'm still looking at that far margin because then anything in between is going to stand out. Um, and it's going to be in focus whereas if I just focus at 50 60 yards just in my water or what have you anything behind that I'm not going to see so I'm just extending my vision so I haven't got to walk the whole way to see the whole way yeah if I did start seeing a couple of shows down there I might want to get myself around there to line them up or what have you but apart from that I can see where they are you know I don't really need to be moving I'm sat on rods and I can see pretty much all the way from here I mean say pretty much I've been stood out that's why I got the waders on I've been stood out in the water and look how much more I can see now and I can hear a lot better as well so I can see all the way to my right and pretty much all the way to my left there's just a, literally a bay that goes around there to the left it's the only thing that I can't see everything else I can see I'll just keep scanning and scanning and scanning and looking at that far margin until something pops its head out. Hopefully it does. Look at them bad boys. So cooked crumpets. And that's edgy. I've only got a fork, so I'll be using the, the back edge of the knife <laughs> for buttering. 
there. Yeah. Get that on there. That's an edge. Right. Brought the old rods in. They come back queen as anything. Definitely fishing as well. It's the beauty of using the braid when you lift your rod up. We'll just give it a little pull back. You can feel that it's queer. Obviously with mono there's too much stretch in it and you can't feel that. So yeah, that's what was out there. Four ounces, semi-stiff booms, double ring swivels, down to the old hinge. Big old loops. But yeah, nothing. But yeah, they were both fishing. I haven't seen anything, I've seen one tench, so I'm just gonna go for a mooch about now. Biv is zipped up. Make it look like I'm sweeping. A bit dodgy around here. <laughs> Happy days, hopefully. Might be able to find some signs of some fish. The old shades on. <coughs> See what's happening. Just walking past this lake. It's a different lake. Next to the one that I'm fishing. <laughs> some big fish in here as well. I've just seen one. It's behind this rope. Well, that's an out of bounds, but you can fish up to the rope. Is it a million miles away from where that fish showed? And I know after speaking to a mate of mine that there's a lot of fish behind that rope anyway. He's been fishing on here a bit. He said that they have been hanging behind there, so definitely worth keeping my eye on. Which we just seen another one show behind this rope. It's only about 10, 10 yards behind it, I'd say. It's not a million miles away. I'm thinking about possibly I could clip up to the rope and then bait past the rope and sort of draw them closer. Understand what I mean, maybe. Yeah, so say for instance, that's probably about, what, 21, 22 wraps. Could fish up to the rope and then maybe put the bait at say 23 wraps, 22 wraps, 21 wraps and sort of, just sort of draw it closer. Not loads, but just sort of scatter it. A few spawns and then bring it a wrap closer. A few spawns, wrap closer, a few spawns. Hopefully, might be able to get them drawn out. Hmm. That is definitely tempting. See, it's an opportunity. There's 40 pounders in here, so. I actually had one out of here a couple of years ago. A banger, 38 pounder, common. Sort of. Almost sort of done touch. Some real nice ones in here, and real rare ones as well. They sort of go missing for a long time. From what I'm told, don't know loads about the place, but there's definitely some bangers. Right, I am in the new swim. Turn that light off. It's been there, uh, tying some rigs up. So, yeah, round in the new swim. Got three rods ready to go on the cable. Put choddies on them all. All four carbon. Leaders. Yeah. Another one here. Yeah. Three four carbon leaders, naked chods, four ounce wads. Which I know the wrap, so I'm just actually gonna wrap them up and wang all three on that cable as singles. Three single brights. Yeah, uh, that's about as compli complicated as it gets. <laughs> um I have put um, a couple of spawns out there just behind the cable and they're uh, sort of two just on the cable so hopefully that'll maybe try and draw them out just to the old manila and, and um, uh, maggots what I had left like, from last night so hopefully that'll draw them out but we shall see and uh, just about get them out now well once I've wrapped them up put some baits on so uh, yeah get them out and uh, that's me done for the night they are absolutely Rocking. A little bit of a drop in the bobbin. 
mill choddies. Oh yeah, that's it, we're doing it. Good morning. Well, as you can see, three rods still in action. So, no joy. However, it wasn't until about, time was it yesterday, about 10, 11 o'clock when I was seeing them fish. So I'm probably going to give it to about then, see if anything shows, if it materialises. If not, I'm going to go on the mooch again. Definitely going to go and bait that spot again on the light behind me. Probably bait this as well. Let's keep the bait going in. A few different areas, which gives me options then and places to walk. That's the plan. The weather has took a drastic turn for the worse. <laughs> the wind is hammering in and the rain has started. Not great. Makes you question your sanity. <laughs> but better than being at home. Can't catch them at home, can you? Simple as that. Everything's a little bit of a mess. I've got to go and restock everything today. Milk, water, all that, all the essentials. Um, I have actually just had a savage liner on the middle rod. Actually, sort of went up a little bit and then dropped quite a bit down either I got had a line or got done it was sort of a birdie sort of thing but there was no birds out there at the time um, but yeah I have seen one as well behind the rope but you know I'm not a million miles away from it so it's always a good sign you know, it's nice to know they're in the zone plus that is obviously an out of bounds it's slack water so it's just screaming fish isn't it <laughs> To say I'm devastated is an understatement. The right hander, this is gone. Just crapped up to the top and dropped to the bottom. And as I was getting to it, it just went straight up to the top again. And I uh, started taking a better line. It's kited right. And I think it's gone under the cable. And there was an old line on the, on the cable. It's got wrapped up there, but then it did start coming towards me with a load of... It, it could have been weed, but it felt like line dragging behind it. I could see the fish sort of just wallowing on the surface. And, uh, yeah, it ended up cutting me off. Um, I'm guessing that was probably through, through the line. It's cut me, like, right on the end of my leader. So I'm guessing it's just line to line. I've got my four, oh, my four carbon leader back, but it's cut. So, the plan paid off, but no, uh, no fish at the end of it. But hopefully, potentially, this is the fish turning up. It's the only sort of grace I can take from it. Oh, let me get in here. Oh, I am deviled. After all that work, and that happens, <sighs> that's fishing, eight. Right, last time we spoke was this morning. After losing that fish, I've been baited a couple of zones on the big pond, but I have uh, I actually packed away from this swim where I lost the fish on the other lake, not the big lake. Um, yeah, that's a bit confusing. Yeah, so. Anyway, <laughs> I'm back on the lake. What well, I lost, one off. So not the big pond, but I have baited the big pond. Um, just getting sorted now. I'm gonna put a couple of naked chuddies back out there in the zone. And I'm gonna put one on a solid bag. Just on rubber. Um, there's bag crayfish in here. One of the rigs that I brought in the other morning had been crayed. So I'm just uh, putting out, just for a little bit of confidence really. But yeah, solid bag and two single brights. Do me, one pink. One yellow, the one that I lost one on was a was a pink signature, so yeah, nothing massively changed, hopefully get another chance in the morning. Um yeah, that's it really. It's to open. Gotta to go to Bristol in the morning. Well, pack up about ten. Hopefully in that time we can get a fish. It is very cold though. <laughs>
the old solid bag. Manila powder, pellet. It. No. It's made it nice and airborne. Tied it on. It's got by about 90 yards. Yeah. That's it. I'm going out first. And then two chaddies. So I've clipped up, ready to go. Well, the rods are out. The stove is on. Warming me back up. The Foster's is cracked. It's game on. It's pretty cold. <laughs> Ring on the carps. Morning brew. <sighs> Quiet night. Again. I've just started getting a couple little liners. There's the geese. Yeah, I just started getting a couple of little liners now, so could be on for bites. What happened the other morning, so I've only got about an hour left before I've got red to Bristol. Um, well. So I've got an hour left before I've got to pack up. I'm gonna go and put some some bait. Let me finish this brew. I'm gonna put some bait <clears throat> back on the big pit on the vaulting lake. And this one. That's what I've mainly been doing really. I've been fishing this one. Uh-huh. But I've been baiting this one. Just because this is the one that I'm focusing on. And I'm keeping my eyes on this one as well. Not really looking much behind me where I'm fishing. I'm looking on this one because this is the one where the target is. I know that sounds a little bit Irish because <laughs> I'm not fishing it, but I'd much rather just be baiting it until it comes right, until I see a fish in that zone or what have you where I'm baiting, then it's game on. I don't want to put unnecessary pressure in that zone. I want the fish to come across that bait, get on it, keep returning to it, and then I'm gonna fish it. Hey, look, check me out, hey, with me collar and that, hey? Where have I been? <laughs> yeah, so basically, meeting is done. It is, oh, full beaming everyone. Uh, 20 past nine on a Monday, woo! Just getting back to the lake. Just topped up all the bits that I need. Been to see Mr. Maker. He's sorted me out some maggots and some manila pe pellets and budworm pellets. Oh my God, it's turning. <sighs> yeah, uh, yeah, had a kebab. Because it's over in Bristol. Uh, Tom lives over there at Acorn Fisheries. A little plug there for the fishery if anyone's interested in going down there. Mr. Maker's always on hand for some good information. Um, but yeah, I've been to see Tom, we had a kebab, a bit of a chat and that. He's going fishing over at Linear tomorrow. Um, he's trying to draw me over, but I will not be drawn from the plan. Um, everything is coming good for this spot now that I've been baiting. The wind's swinging tomorrow about 10 o'clock apparently to a southwesterly, which my spot picks up. Um, it, everything is just falling into place. The temperatures are going to start rising with that southerly wind. Obviously, some warm winds coming from the south. It's going to be like double figure temp temperatures in the night, um, which is obviously mega for this time of year. So, yeah, I'm going to get down. I'm just going to, I'm literally just pulling up now. What to do? What to do? Yeah, I'm going to have a pull up. I'm going to go and have a little lap around the lake. Or do I? What do I do? Yeah, I think I'm gonna have a little lap, walk around, see if. No, I can't, I can't, I can't. No, I'm going straight to my swim. Um, just because everything I've been prepping for, you know, regardless of where them fish are now, you know, I've got nothing else primed and ready to go. So, yeah, I'm gonna get straight in my swim, get myself, I'm gonna just chuck a couple of singles out tonight, maybe a couple of spawns over the top. Um, yeah, get myself all sorted. Um, in my swim and then in the morning I'm going to get up at first light see if I see anything or most importantly I'm going to redo the rods I'm going to put all three out nice and fresh in the morning roll the bait and just sort of sit on it I'm going to sit on my hands tonight it is the final morning <clears throat> it's been absolutely bang on what what you would think was bang on anyway but it just hadn't happened you know I hadn't even seen the fish and I've been hawkeye in this water 
But that's carp fishing. I've loved every minute of it, you know. It's been a long old session, long slug, you know. <clears throat> but is what it is. I'm gonna continue to bait this spot. I'm gonna bait it before I go. I've got plenty of bait left there. I'm gonna get all that out in this wind as well. It's just gonna be pretty mental. Turn this off. Yeah, I'm gonna bait this spot, keep it going. Uh, I've got an, I'm going to New York on Sunday. Get away, treated myself, eh? A random one, but yeah, gonna go to New York. Should be all Christmassy and that. Woo! <laughs> but um, yeah, oi oi. Yeah, I'm gonna bait this spot and then I'll probably come back when I get back from New York, give it another go. But I've got loads of stuff planned in. You know, my fishing's quite variable at the minute. You know, ever 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 since sort of say Burfield, I haven't done another campaign since then. I did like 10 years of campaign fishing just trying to single out one fish and I think my whole outlook on that sort of fishing has changed considerably now. Um, I'm doing tuitions, I mean if you've been watching these vlogs, I, you know, tuitions, Belgium, you know, next next session I'm planning, I might come back here, so sort of big pit fishing, uh, low stock and then I'm planning on going out having a couple of socials over the winter, gonna go and fish with Maker, probably on St. John's or summer, you know, been over to Lynch Hill, you know, my fishing changes all the time and I just think, why not? You know, why, you know, so many people get one track sighted into their way of fishing, I'm quite, you know, like I say, quite variable, I, I whatever makes me happy and I, that's what I always say to people, you know, just do what makes you happy. Um, too many people these days are out there forcing their opinion of fishing on people, which I don't think is right. You know, it's each to their own. Whatever makes you happy about your sport, about the sport, sorry, about fishing, you know, just go and do it. Um, I'm sure one day I am going to drop back into sort of just solely campaign fishing. You know, there's a couple of fish sort of on the radar that I really want to go and snatch. Uh, if I can say snatch, it could take two, three years or, or, or longer. So, yeah, there's definitely some fish out there that I want to catch that need a campaign, they need time, uh, but at the minute I'm just doing my thing, <laughs> but yeah unless I catch something now this is going to be the end of this vlog, it's been a bit mental and no, nothing's happened, I can only apologise, but you know, as you guys are sat at home in a nice warm no doubt, I'm out here freezing, <laughs> Eggy led. <laughs>